Okay, we're going to be responding here to a rapid heart rate coming into the cardiac emergency. Uh, not too much to go on except that the patient is 53 years old with a rapid heart rate. Not sure of any previous history of rapid heart rate or maybe a history of anxiety or other type of uh, even cardiac uh, dysrhythmias. Um, this is hypocol. You have to kind of start thinking about what you can do when you get there. Uh, these patients can want to be critical when you arrive on scene and not perfusing very well due to the rapid heart rate. It could be an SVT. It could be maybe a rapid AFib. Uh, maybe even a VTAC with a pulse. On the flip side, it might be anxiety. Maybe they're just tachycardic and having a little bit of an anxiety attack or feeling the palpitations. So we have to wait to see what we find upon arrival. Start thinking about the drugs you can give, like cardizem, adenosine, amiodarone, or even cardioversion on patients like this uh, to help slow the heart rate down as well. And the sedation you might have to give uh, with, the, with that cardioversion, like Versed, and the type of jewel settings you have to start with um, according to your local protocols and your local guidelines to help slow down the rhythm. Um, and other things that might go, in, go alongside rapid heart rates like chest pain, uh, maybe the patient's some type of failure from the heart, rapid heart rate. So we have to look into all this, keep all this in mind, and refer to our local guidelines when we're thinking about how we're going to treat this patient. I'm going to cut this off now. We're going to be there in about a couple of minutes, and I'll let you know what we found out uh, on the other side after the call. Okay, so wrapping up this call, uh, upon arrival, she actually did have a pretty rapid heart rate. It was 164, uh, so she wasn't an SVT. Uh, it was regular. Um, she did have a history of anxiety, but I didn't want to blow it off as, as being pure anxiety because uh, she doesn't really have a severe history. So the last time she had an anxiety attack was about two years ago, and she doesn't really suffer from it that badly. And she also stated that when she's had anxiety attacks in the past, it was nothing like this one. Um, she was on beta blockers in the past for uh, PVCs that she used to have, uh, but hasn't been taking them. Uh, for a while, and the PVCs seem to have resolved themselves. Uh, no PVCs in the mono when I when we were looking at that. Blood pressure was, uh, uh, with, you know, a little elevated, 158 over 80. Um, the rest where it was fine, and no other complaints other than just feeling dizzy. Um, we went ahead and, uh, you know, evaluated her, uh, asked appropriate questions uh, for this patient. Um, the, no, no type of uh, you know over-the-counter type stimulants like you know caffeine or anything like that that you can think of that might maybe elevate it temporarily. Um, and again, she was actually having this these palpitations for about 45 minutes before we got there. So uh, when I'm moving into the ambulance, uh, starting the IV. By the time we got done actually starting the intravenous, the rate dropped down to 104. Uh, the blood pressure remained the same, and for the dura duration of the patient transport, her heart rate stayed in about 102, 104 range, and uh, the dizziness that she felt, lightheadedness, uh, passed as well. So it seemed like kind of moving into the ambulance and starting the IV seemed to resolve the SVT. Uh, symptoms that she was having. Um, one thing I just want to mention uh, where I work, actually we have the EKG that, that syncs up with the electronic tablet type uh, charts and what, what I usually do with a, for normal patients, I don't normally will print out an EKG since it syncs up with the tablet. But in cases like this, I usually go ahead and print out a uh, paper EKG to show the doctor uh, when we get there so he doesn't have to wait for the sinking to the emergency rooms uh, system to see the EKG. He can see it right there as we do the patient handoff and even the doctor felt that something a little bit more going on there than the anxiety uh, that the patient thought maybe she was having. So all in all we were able to prevent giving something serious like a denizine or maybe a cardizin for this patient or having to uh, even cardiovert. Um, but so it was a good outcome, uh, and it was the type of thing where, you know, just the moving around and starting the IV and talking to the patient seemed to wind up resolving her signs and symptoms. Um, so it, it was actually a good call, worked out good, and it was actually a legitimate type call where she was having an actual uh, cardiac issue going on. So uh, again, you know, these are the type of quality to think of a gamut of type of things that might be going on and looking at blood pressures and uh, recent history and past history and things like that that all tie in together. 
uh, so you don't kind of get uh, tunnel vision and focus on an anxiety history. Look at the bigger picture and find out things like I mentioned with the beta blockers and a past PVC uh, type history as well. So uh, that's it for this issue of the Virtual Response Medic. Uh, as always, this is Jim Hoffman from the EMS Professional, and stay safe.